I'm seeing a lot of people running around with e-meters now. And they're using that to define whether something is healthy when it comes to EMR and electromagnetic pollution or not. And what I want to get to with your guys' help is basically to clear up what are the pros and cons of only using an e-meter to try and identify electromagnetic radiation and whether or not it is impacting you. Right. Okay, so um, e-meters, um, EMF meters, Gauss meters, RF meters, um, what they do, they are recording a, a level of a field. They don't specifically look at the structure of the field. Hmm. And this is where we really have a confusion with what is affecting the body and what is not. For example, um, we have some numbers uh, worldwide, and especially in countries like Sweden and Australia, where uh, there is a level of radiation that people shouldn't be exposed more than um, two to three milligrams of a field. And what does that mean, really? Um, first, I would like to say that it's not so much as what you're exposed to as what you are not exposed to. Those meters don't record what the biological body is um, being affected by. But if you take, for example, let's say, if, let's put it this way. Let's, it, the numbers don't really actually matter that much as to what I want people to understand. Three milligrams, let's say, is the limit. And ab above that, it's becoming unsafe uh, based on so certain studies. If you have a field that you're recording with your emitter of one milligrams, and then you have another field that you identified in your space that's another one milligrams, and then you have a third one that is one milligrams, you say, okay, one plus one plus one equals three, I'm okay. Um, what are you really recording is a set of, it's a very complex uh, set of information that is that is coming to the body, you have three milligrams that is not three, it's actually exponential, it is uh, cumulative. It's kind of like in order to get up to the window of a building, you may need like a ladder, and then once you're at the window, you can use that same ladder to get up to the roof, and then when you're on top of the roof, maybe you can get up to the next building. It's um, where you get at the end, one frequency will get you to a certain point. Then the second frequency is going to pick you up from that point and get you to a higher level, and then so on. So okay, but but you know, if someone's out there and saying, "Hey, listen, Patrick and Dr. Beck, I'm sitting here with an e-meter and it's showing ten milligauss. I know that's not safe for me, correct? So aren't they basically in a state of being able to show something and then react or leave that space or do something because that's basically showing you some kind of an output. And if it, I understand maybe sometimes it's two or three and that may be cumulative and different, but for a lot of other people, it may be much more. So um, actually you would have to be an expert to use a uh, RF meter. And um, so far as I know, nobody is being trained to use one. So yes, 10 milligrams is not safe. And we would advise anybody to not be exposed to that field for an extended period of time because there is also a length of time you're exposed to it. And the most important is how your biology is able to process it and balance itself. And in order to balance itself, the biology has to have access to information that are natural. Uh, the uh, magnetic uh, field of the Earth is about 0.5 Gauss. The variation of the magnetic field are micro Gauss. And this is what actually matters in the way you can adapt to the environment. So we always preach, because if, if you're an expert, you can actually say, okay, this is the perfect situation. I've been able to identify all the fields that are around me, whether it's outside or inside a, a building. But do you actually really know what you're not exposed to? And Gauss and RF meters do not 
look at the structure of a field. Is it a field that is coherent? Is it a field that is uh, destro destroying the coherence? And is there coherence somewhere in the space that can be used in order to be able to be resistant to the uh, aggression of those fields? So in many ways, you're saying you're testing possibly some sort of qua uh, quantity, but not the quality itself, correct? You're exactly. correct. Yes, uh, Gauss mirrors don't have the subtlety, um, the subtlety of uh, being able to record what it is that the biology can harvest in order to defend itself. As we know, we have some people that are very electrosensitive and some people that are not. Right. And the difference between the two is the adaptability. The adaptability is piloted by the environment. Right. So if I could make a quick analogy, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, this is very much akin to counting calories. So you, you have an ability to count calories, but where they're coming from, what type of quality, whether your body is actually absorbing using those calories and the nutrients within them is always different. You could have 100 calories from a Big Mac, which is going to be very low nutrition, or 100 calories from organic you know, broccoli, which will be quite nutritious, freshly picked. And that's the difference. There's still 100, correct? But very different types of things and how they affect the body. Yes, you're, you're correct. And, and so Gauss meters are good for having an idea of uh, basically um, you see the elephant in the room, but you want to actually make sure that you see it. Yes. And what those uh, devices are doing is, is telling you what you already know, that being exposed to EMF is not a... Um, a good thing and and there is so those uh, i mean even if you do like um, if you want to do repair on your electrical service because you have a faulty wiring system that actually is creating more output than it should so those are very good for that you can actually identify where the problem is and it's very costly to actually repair electrical service mm -hmm. but it's what you're looking for you can actually use uh, rf meter or emf meter okay so and so Yes, yeah, so, so people could use the, the e-meter, but do it with some diligence that you're not going to fully understand what's going on. Is there anything they could do further to then clarify if this is a serious situation or not? Is there anything out there that will then take the quantity they're seeing and be able to show them whether the quality is impacting them or not? Or is that just too far uh, outside of the scope of what we are measuring at this point? Yes, they are. Unfortunately, a lot of those systems are not very accessible to um, the uh, lay person mm -hmm. because uh, they are usually used in laboratories and they have very, they're very sophisticated equipment, very expensive. Most of the time, you cannot carry them with you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a set of components that will allow you to measure the subtle frequencies and specifically how those subtle frequencies are affected by the artificial frequencies. Right. So we, we have, um, so I know it's very confusing because you have magnetic fields, you have electric fields, you have electromagnetic fields, and how are they structured? I would like to actually give an, an idea of people on how, what the structure is. For example, we know that the, the biology, the pH of the blood, ideally should be in a range of 7.1 to 7.3. Uh, for the um, magic uh, area where the biology is self-healing, mm -hmm. but also another factor, which is the RH2, which is the electrical component of that equation, which is the ability to reduce a solution or be oxidized. So reduction, oxidation. Um, this is based on the amount of concentration of protons, I mean uh, electrons, I'm sorry, for the pH, the concentration of protons. All the, the relation between the electrons and the protons are being influenced by those fields. And there is also the conductivity and resistivity in the blood. I'm not going to give you a whole science of this right now, but we will be putting actually on our website the explanation on how a person can keep their balance of electrons and protons in a space that is pretty narrow. Uh, for the pH is between 7.1 and 7.3. Outside of that, you start to have pathologies and issues. And then for the RH2 is a space of about 22 to 23, 21 to 23 on the scale of zero to 42. 
Right. And I'm sure the complexity of this science is beyond most of us. I mean, it's good to know that science for sure. And if those people that want to go down that rabbit hole, they could find more with you guys for sure. But if someone is is out there and using this e-meter as a way to kind of showcase, because you see this a lot too. I've seen more and more of these Instagram stories where someone has a phone or some kind of electronic device, puts the e-meter, shows the reading, going high for it then put some sort of solution, let's say, you know, because there's many now, more and more companies are doing some kind of blockers, this, that, and shows that it goes down. What would you say to that, you know, that person saying, look, it's effective? So um, I'm going to actually let um, Dr. Mini Beck speak about this because she has experience with people using those uh, emitters and what it does for them. But right. before, um, we're talking about um, blocking and uh, correcting uh, those webs. If we don't restore the inherent set of information the body needs in order to be self-healing, you're not actually doing a favor mm. you, because the body has to adapt and be able to be resilient to those. But I'd like to actually uh, introduce um, the fact that uh, emitters can create more issues when you're reading them than they're helping. And uh, Dr. Mindy Beck. Yes, and to speak on the blocking factor, um, as we've talked about in the past, if you try to block these frequencies, let's say from your cell phone, your cell phone is designed to step up its power to find you the best signal. So now it's actually going to be outputting more uh, electromagnetic signals, artificial ones. So Wouldn't the e-meter pick that up though? If it's if it's creating like a Faraday cage kind of situation where it's knocking off everything, it may have a temporary decrease mm -hmm. um, in the actual readings. Right. So there may be that sensation that it's that it's helping, but you'll notice that if you were to just spend all day with your meter in front of your phone, it's going to go through a massive range of frequencies. Mm -hmm. So it may be very low at some times and higher at others. And what you're saying, I believe also with the solutions you're providing is that it's not about what the e-meter is outputting. Of course, if it's very high, you shouldn't be in that region, but it's more about what you're going to do with the quality, correct? So something like you matrix, you, would you or would you not, number one, see any change in an e-meter if someone were using it and trying to show their friends, hey, look, would you see any change after you put a U matrix on a phone? And the second part of that question is, why does it matter or not matter uh, about the e-meter changing after you put some sort of solution on it? So, the, um, and, and you're correct, Caspar. This is the, the whole key is that the e-meter is not going to have the subtlety to see the change in the structure mm -hmm. of the field. And this is what I wanted to actually express is how is the field structure? Uh, you measure a level. It doesn't mean that that structure, that field is actually harming you. Maybe it is, maybe it is not. If you do not have the ability to measure the subtlety of what the body needs in order to function properly, you will not see that on the meter. So there is no change on the technical side of the web, because those emitters are pretty actually, um, even though they're putting more and more uh, sophisticated system out there, they are not measuring people, uh, what people are not looking for. Right, so in effect, what you're saying is you're taking the 100 calories of the Big Mac and turning it into the organic broccoli, correct? <laughs> exactly. Essentially, yes. That's, that's actually a nice analogy. <laughs> right, because you're not going to see the change. And that's, that's really why I wanted to speak with you, because I feel like a lot of these people out there that don't know too much but are just getting into EMF and understanding that it's bad for you, which I applaud. That's great. We have to put more of this awareness out there that this is impacting our bodies. But then to say that, look, it's going up or down and it's working or not, I think there is a little bit of confusion to it. And I do believe that, that these analogies and what you're saying here and the science behind it does prove that it's, it's not all about these readings and e-meters. It's about the quality. Correct. And at, as to what you spoke about, 
you know, this is getting some more people involved in awareness. And that's great, especially for people who are very Socratic or, um, you know, have to have very clear measurements and to believe something is real. Mm -hmm. If you show those people, hey, this is what the actual government standards are and look at how far outside they are, this device is, those people may stop and want to make some changes. Where I've found as a practitioner it to be um, of some concern that people are going around with these meters and checking everything is on the psychological factor. Mm. Let me give you an example. Yes. I have, we have several clients who are uh, electro hypersensitive and they have meters and they can go to a space and and be fine and then something catches their eye let's say a cell tower or a wireless router and then they bring their meter out and they start going around with it and yeah it spikes and their anxiety goes through the roof and they start exhibiting um, symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now we have this whole impact that is that they're really, really concentrated on it. And thus it is almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it really is happening. They are really having these physical symptoms. And I've seen people go into panic attacks and, um, full body burning sensations. And I, I mean, you name it. I've, I've seen people um, be in thriving pain, but it was because all of a sudden they saw their EMF meter spike. Um, so for that factor, it becomes uh, almost detrimental to their well-being to constantly be measuring the yeah, I mean, I, I feel this is very much in line with what a lot of people are doing with their genetic testing, 23andMe and everything. They see something on paper that gives them uh, some kind of inclination that, oh my God, I have 80% maybe chance of some disease in the future, and they start panicking, right? And it's yeah. the same here in some ways, because you, you don't get all the info. It's a piece of information, but it's it's not a complete piece, I would say, of information, meaning epigenetic shows that your genes can, of course, switch on and off. It doesn't mean you're destined for that. Uh, and the same here with e-meters. Are there any parting or final pieces of advice you'd give to people who are using the e-meters um, uh, that would maybe kind of give them a little bit more clarity on how to use it or, or just maybe even not using it? I would suggest that if they're trying to convince someone that may be skeptical that electromagnetic frequencies exist and that they're harmful, it's a good way to get people on board. Mm -hmm. But if it's being used as a, a scare tactic or to create, you know, this sensation of like, oh my gosh, this space is unhealthy, I've got to get out of here, and it creates massive anxiety, then it's time to put the meter away. Right. And, and trust that there are solutions that can uh, that are out there that we can create a safe space. And meaning that no matter where you go, you're going to be bombarded by these frequencies. Casper, I would like to add the fact that um, we're not actually uh, bashing um, um, RF meters or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it, there has to be a conscience on about how to use it. For example, let's say I am in the market to uh, find the perfect home to um, put my family in. And um, I'm concerned about EMF. So I buy a RF meter and I start to go around and I'm measuring and I'm like, okay, this feels pretty good. What I don't do is I don't spend like a whole month or a whole year analyzing the space, which can actually have depending on the seasons, depending on the, if it's raining a lot or not, I'm going to have different readings. And I don't actually have the opportunity to do that in a few minutes or few hours even. Mm -hmm. the, the reading could actually change. So I could find the perfect spot. And then I find out that uh, when it's raining, uh, there is a conductivity in the air and in the ground that actually is 
um, just popping up the amount of EMF that is in the, in the space. Or there is the, um, the neighborhood is growing and the uh, electric company is uh, beefing up the, the power lines and now uh, what used to be uh, 2.1 milligrams is now 7. And uh, so there is really not a perfect situation on using those. Um, they should be really used uh, as information and not something to actually create stress because I can tell you one thing, the stress that the, the, the people are going through when they're reading those things and they actually know that EMF is an issue. Uh, the stress is actually much more dangerous than actually the EMF itself. Right. And that's, wow. a really, that's a really good point because I think a lot of people take snapshots of things and yes. get very scared about that snapshot when in reality, if you took a snapshot of something at any point, that's going to change within a few minutes. And the same is here for e for electromagnetic fields. They're constantly in flux, changing, and to look at only one little snapshot and then start to panic over that is, right. is not going to be healthy at all regardless of the actual reading you see, right? And it's very similar to like, if we were to test um, for cancer every day. Mm. So every day, you, we're constantly creating cancer cells in our body, right. but our body is able to manage them. But if you happen to test at that, that right time, you know, it shows, it, it will show that you have cancer, you know, mm. and, and this scares people and sends them into actually that disease process. Mm -hmm. And and Casper, I would actually say that, um, and I have few advice to give to people if we have a couple more minutes, but I would, I, I wanted to reiterate what I started to say in the beginning of the conversation is that um, it's not uh, a one exposure to one frequencies, how many frequencies are you exposed to? And you can actually control uh, this, uh, we do actually uh, offer tools to correct the uh, compatibility of those frequencies where we make them actually not only um, harmless to the body, but um, supportive because the frequency has the ability to carry a signal. And it's how you make it talk that's going to make a difference. So not everybody is going to be able to protect and control everything. But if you diminish the amount of assault, which meaning the amount of frequency that you're exposed to, such as starting with your cell phone or um, restructuring your water. And, and, and it's part of the advice I want to say, give to people is, don't try to actually be controlling everything, just control what you can, have the good intention, do not uh, stress, put good nutrition, good supplements in your diet, uh, exercise as much as possible in nature. Uh, try to keep a, keep a clean environment around you, uh, hygiene, and use as many natural uh, products as you can, and have good thoughts. Um, it's, it's all very nurturing. And this is how the body can heal and be impervious to the things you cannot control because ultimately, we can measure as much as we want with RF meters. Uh, what are we going to do about the satellites, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there is nothing you can do about it. So you measure it, now you're worried about it. And there is nothing you can do about it right now, except that you can create maybe a bubble in your space that allows you to be ahead of the game instead of being running behind the train. Yeah, that's wonderful advice, and, and I, I think it's it's useful not just in uh, EMF, e meter reading, and everything, but just in life in general. That's that's advice to try and stay healthy and or heal yourself from a disease. 